of Paradise Displays has long been the holy grail of wildlife filmmakers. It's one of the most difficult behaviors of all to recall. The first to try was a 30-year-old David Attenborough. In 1957, he and cameraman Charles Lagos journeyed deep into the highlands, but nobody would tell them where to look for the birds. Local people thought birds were money, and if you were looking for birds, they'd think, oh, you know what he's after. We're not going to tell him where our birds are, uh, because they were saving them for the moment when they wanted to actually kill them and, and use their plumes in bridal settlements and so on. Technology was another obstacle. The trouble with film in the 50s was it was all in black and white, because television was in black and white, but even in black and white, it was very insensitive film. So there were areas of the rainforest where you couldn't film. There was simply not enough light. Finally, after six weeks, assisted by dozens of porters, they eventually saw a Rajiana bird of paradise. Even in this light, we could see his brilliant golden head, his iridescent emerald green bib, and the gorgeous red plumes hanging from beneath his wings. I have to say, it was pretty dumb film, actually. <laughs> I mean, the, what we eventually uh, arrived at after six programs, weekly programs, where we find the bird of paradise, we ended up with this rather bleary black and white film. And I was rather uh, embarrassed. Really. I thought people would say, oh, all that work for that. So we gave it such a hype that people said, good heavens, fancy that. But um, they were pretty dumb shots, really. There was room for improvement, and the leap forward came in 1965 when pioneering filmmaker Heinz Seelman lugged a color movie camera high into the New Guinea jungle. He spent nine months trying to film Birds of Paradise in the face of enormous technical difficulties. Heinz Seelman's achievement was fantastic uh, because he took 35 millimeter gear and you've only got to pick up a 35mm movie camera, and you, which is one they make Hollywood movies with, and you know how big it is. But also the film stuff itself, which goes through at a terrible rate, great cans of this stuff that you've got to trade them on, and the sheer physical work of getting it there. And you got back with some material, which I think even to this day has not been parallel. It was 30 years before David Attenborough returned to the challenge. In 1995, with producer Paul Reddish and two cameramen and lighter 16mm film cameras, they also had one of the first broadcast low-light video cameras. They headed into the forest for 28 weeks. So we had Mike Potts and Richard Kirby, two of the best military uh, cameramen, and the